Um, so the novel is about a woman named Hope who mm-hmm. discovers that her grandmother, who now has Alzheimer's, has a secret history buried in the Holocaust in Paris. As she sets out to find out what happened in her grandmother's past, she discovers an incredible love story, 70 years in the making, and some things that change everything about her perspective on life today. So it's really a story of love, of faith, of family, and of finding out who we are um, and determining our own identities. I've been wanting to write a novel for a long time Mm -hmm. that deals with the era of the Holocaust, but I thought it would be more meaningful to readers today to read a novel that also connected to today's world. And about a decade ago, I lived in Paris and discovered that there was a lot of World War II history there that I did not know about. So I think those things sort of came together in my mind over the course of time and the story was slowly born. And then some of the other elements, family, food, religion, um, kind of worked their way into the story, largely because of experiences in my own life and the things I was thinking about at the time. It's very surprising and very gratifying to see how well the novel is doing across the world. Um, I think it's very hard when you're writing a novel by yourself. I mean, you're really just sitting at a desk alone, thinking about who will one day be reading this novel. So it's a very extraordinary thing to me to think that it's being translated into so many languages and will have the opportunity, hopefully, to touch readers all around the world. When I began thinking about this novel, and I knew I wanted to set it in the present day, as well as in the 1940s, I thought about the things that would happen in the intervening 70 years. Um, And I thought a lot about the psychological repercussions of having been affected by the Holocaust in the 1940s. How would that determine the course of your life today? So I think that the issues of family, of forgiveness, and of the search for for who you're meant to be really arose very naturally from the basic plot I had in mind. Um, But as I began to research the novel, I discovered many things along the way that just sort of seemed to fit very naturally into the plot. For example, um, religion was never really a piece of it when I set out to write, but I found some incredibly compelling stories along the way that sort of worked their way naturally into the plot and I think made the book that much more impactful for me and I think allowed me to dive much deeper into the sort of influences in our lives about what make us who we are. I think that as a writer, it's common, particularly in a book like this, to explore issues that you yourself wonder about. Um, I'm in my early 30s, and I'm at a point in my life where I'm really wondering about love um, and about the nature of true love. So for me, this was very much an exploration of my own ideas about love. And I think partially through writing this book, I really do have the belief now that true love exists. It is absolutely worth waiting for. Um, And I think it's harder than some people think. I I don't think it's something that just magically happens. I think it's something you have to work at. But I do believe that that fate can bring you to the right person. And I'm much happier (laughs) as a human now, (laughs) um, having really, I feel, discovered that in this novel through the course of writing this novel. I think that these scenes I feel most connected to are actually the ones in which the mother, daughter, granddaughter, grandmother are interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the interesting things about this novel. Um, We don't all know what it feels like to have a family member with a secret past, but I think we do all, all of us know what it feels like 
to have love between mothers and daughters, grandmothers and granddaughters, things like that. So that was really, I believe, the part of the novel I connected with the most. And I really hope it is what readers will connect with the most too, because I think we can all think about the people in our own lives that we love um, and how we would feel if these things were happening to them. I love to bake. Um, I bake all the time. And it's actually quite funny because I don't always eat what I bake. I just enjoy the process of baking. So um, I spend quite a lot of time fattening up my friends and family. I do feel that baking has a deeper meaning. I think in a lot of families, the stories of the past are not always spoken. But I feel like the stories of the past are communicated through the food that we pass down. Um, in my family, there are recipes that my grandmother baked that I know that her mother baked and her mother before her. So I do not necessarily know the specific stories of my great-grandmother or my great-great-grandmother, but I'm often eating their foods, and I think this brings me a little bit closer to the past. Also, I think that in families, particularly among women, baking is a nice way to sort of communicate. Um, sometimes it's not so easy to sit down and to say, you know, what are your memories of the past? But if you're standing in the kitchen together, baking cookies that perhaps your grandmother remembers from her own childhood, um, it's oftentimes a very natural opportunity to tell the stories that that person remembers with the baking. I actually created the recipes myself through an awful lot of taste testing. I think I probably gained a few pounds during the, the creation of the novel. Um, there are, I believe, nine recipes in the book that sort of, some of them um, are very characteristic of what you might find in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, in a bakery today. Uh, and the main character, of course, owns a bakery in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. But some of the recipes date back to the 1940s and are somewhat characteristic of what uh, might have been baked at that time. So it was one of the most fun parts of my job to feel like I had to go to Paris <laughs> to taste test many, many, many pastries. So quite enjoyable. If you're going to write a book, it might as well be about pastries. <laughs> It's funny, when people tell me that the novel made them cry, I never know what to say. I, I, I am very happy that they're touched, but I feel almost like I should apologize. Like, I'm so sorry that I made you cry. Um, I think that the secret to writing a novel that moves people is to write from your own heart. And so I tried to write a story that very naturally explored love and the idea of love on many levels. I think a lot of novels just tackle romantic love, love between a man and a woman generally, which can often be very moving and can certainly make you cry. But in this novel, I really endeavored to write about all sorts of love, love between um, a man and a woman, love between a mother and a daughter, love between a grandmother and a granddaughter, and love between our fellow man, just the love sort of in all of its forms. And I think and hope that that is part of what touched people in this book, because I think we can all identify with that feeling of love for everybody. My hope with this novel is that it's a book that makes you think. I'd like readers to be able to walk away from this book believing a bit more in the power of love, believing a bit more in the chance to find true love, and believing a little bit more in the idea of looking beyond the surface of other people. There is somewhat of a storyline in this book that deals with um, different religions and different faiths. And I think in today's world, there are a lot of, in some ways, between different religious groups, 
some negative feelings. And I really hope that this book makes people think about how we're human beings first and everything else after that. We, have, we share so much of a connection as mankind um, that I think is so much more important than the differences that separate us. Um, so I really would like people to think about accepting people for who they are, learning from their beliefs, and sort of getting along better and filling the world with love. Thank you.